Last one. <laughs> Last one heading on in. <laughs> JB here, and today we're making pickle fried maitake mushrooms. Uh, this is a great option if you're hosting a game night, or if you've got friends over to watch sport ball, or if you're just pre-gaming a night out in the town. Uh, this is super briny, crunchy, salty, um, pretty universally liked by everyone, and we're gonna serve it with a wild ranch. Um, so, I mean, I don't watch a lot of football, but I think that this is a real home run. If you've never tried maitake mushrooms before, and you think that you don't like mushrooms, I would keep an open mind. The texture's like pretty meaty, a little, um, perhaps otherworldly, and that flavor is uh, pretty mild, but beautifully pungent. It takes on flavor really well, and it's just like a really great, great mushroom to add into your repertoire. I'm calling it maitake. Uh, you may have also heard them called hen of the woods, not to be confused with chicken of the woods. Um, these guys have a pretty wide distribution. They're really common. You'll find them at the base of oak trees usually. Um, if you're not a forager yourself, you can totally go buy them from another forager on forage.com. You'll find them throughout the fall and then um, throughout the rest of the year. Uh, they dehydrate and rehydrate really well. If you haven't heard these yet, I really encourage you to. Um, and I think this recipe is gonna be a great way to introduce you to the, some of the flavors and some of the textures of it. <laughs> So there's two ways that you can get these mushrooms pickled. You can make a really basic brine, which is what we're gonna do today. Um, if you're not into making your own pickle brine and you've got like a leftover jar of pickles, you can just shove these mushrooms right into that jar of pickles and call it a day. I'm really excited to try that. I haven't done it yet. If you do try, please let me know in the comments below. I've got a little, pot, a little sauce pot here. Um, I'm just gonna add in uh, equal parts vinegar and water. I'm just using a white vinegar in this case, a champagne vinegar, a rice wine vinegar, white wine vinegar. Those all work great. Um, I'm just going for something super clean in this moment, but feel free to riff as you'd like. You know, I'm putting in an equal amount of water. And then to this, I'm adding in um, a tablespoon of uh, sugar and a tablespoon of kosher salt. Um, again, this is nothing fancy. This is just the most basic brine that you can think of. And I'm gonna heat this um, over, over medium heat. Um, I don't need to bring this to a boil. We're not trying to bring it to a simmer. I'm just, uh, I'm stirring and heating it enough so that the sugar and the salt dissolve into the into the liquid. While that's warming through, uh, I'm just gonna put this guy to the side. This is that big fresh maitake. You see it hasn't been cleaned yet. It came straight from one of our foragers just yesterday and it arrived this morning. Really beautiful. It's really good condition, smells amazing. Um, we're gonna save this for something else. Uh, for right now, I'm gonna pull out these. Uh, these ones from the same, that same vendor I just already cleaned up a little bit. What we're gonna do, is just kind of break them off into bite-sized pieces. Nothing fancy. What's so remarkable about fresh maitake is about how heavy it is when you first get it, when they're so fresh. They're so dense, and they've got these great little fronds, and those are just gonna get all crisped up when we fry them. I'm really excited about this. This brine is already already dissolved. I'm gonna let it be a little bit warm. We also got maitake with salmon cam from Mushbloom Gardens down in Southeast Ohio. If you wanna see that adventure and see it's actually harvesting some of these maitake, um, you can check the link below. The other thing I'll say about this, about pickling mushrooms, if you were gonna eat these straight from the jar pickled, it would be really important to bring this to a simmer and then cook those mushrooms in that brine a little bit before transferring them in. Uh, because we're not gonna be eating these straight from the jar, we're gonna be frying them off in a little bit. I'm not concerned about cooking these mushrooms ahead of time. They're gonna cook in that oil later. I'm just gonna pile these right in, just clean and fresh. Yeah, humans are not built to eat raw mushrooms. Um, so, uh, especially if they're wild, always best to cook them thoroughly. And I'm packing these in there, like, loosely. I'm, I'm getting there, in there enough that, you know, they're kind of stacked in, they're not going to float all around, but I don't want to, like, break any of the fronds. And this brine is all dissolved, it's nice and warm. I'm going to turn this off and pour right in. And then I'm making sure that all the mushrooms are submerged under that brine, we don't want anything popping out. And then I'm going to cover and set this aside in the fridge to pickle for, you know, it depends on what your preference is. Um, the ones that we're making today were pickled for about 48 hours, um, but you've got, depending on how like acidic or how tangy or how vinegary you want these to be, um, feel free to make that adjustment. The longer that they stay in that vinegar brine, the more vinegary they're gonna be. So if you really love like a salt and vinegar chip, do it a few days ahead of time. If you're kind of sensitive to super acidic things, maybe just do 24 hours or less. Setting these aside for a bit, I mean, I've got some that I pickled um, a few days ago, so we're gonna work with those. So these guys, have pickled. We've got all sorts of smells going on in here um, that all are really great. So it's a little, you know, it's it's acidic and vinegary, 
but there's also like some real sweetness some real mushroominess to it so i'm just going to pull these guys out so these ones that we pickled be earlier are um were cultivated uh my takis that were uh, also available on foraged so some of these are a little bit more delicate they're going to break up a little bit more than the sturdier ones that we were working with a second ago um, but that's okay and i'm just taking these out to drain these when we batter and fry them we don't want it to be like too logged down in liquid okay and we're gonna find another use for this brine while these are draining i'm gonna go ahead and make the wild ranch that we're gonna be serving them with for the ranch i've got you know a bunch of herbs here uh some that are cultivated some that are wild that i foraged we've got some wild carrot in here some wild bee balm um some chives from the grocery store some dill um, and then the only other things i'm grabbing are some mayo classic mayo a little buttermilk and uh just some garlic paste super simple the recipe on foraged uh, details quantities but for now i'm just trying to make something that looks and tastes great so i'm gonna chop these guys up pretty finely and it can be rustic it doesn't need to be anything fancy it doesn't need to look a certain way and to me what makes something like taste kind of ranchy the thing that makes your brain go oh ranch um is the dill moment and the allium moment. So make sure you've got something oniony in there. And if you're, and I, uh, if you can't get dill, it's okay. Um, that to me is just the thing that says ranch when I, when I eat it. I'm gonna throw a bunch of this right into the jar with the mayo, start stirring that around. I'm gonna add in garlic paste. And this whole thing's a little thick. So we're just gonna add in just enough buttermilk for it to like feel a little looser, feel more dippable. We really want to be like loose enough to coat something when you dip into it. Buttermilk's also adding a lot of tang into this and that's looking nice. I'm going to take a quick test, taste test. We're gonna have to season with salt, but I just wanna make sure that I've textures and amount of herbs are tasting good. That's great. That's all it needs to be. I'm gonna come in just enough seasoning. If you wanna get fun with it, throw in a bunch of black pepper. Um, a little bit of Greek yogurt is also great, but to me, this is kind of like my, my basic, my base standard uh, wild ranch sauce. It's just a mess of whatever herbs I find on the street with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of mayo and a little bit of buttermilk. That is good to go. I'm gonna clean this up real quick and then we're gonna get to frying. Oh. I'm ready to fry. If you haven't fried before, don't worry. I'm going to give you the cues that you need to make these look golden and crispy and perfect. The first thing I'm going to grab is my big pot. I'm going to fill it up with a bunch of oil. I'm going in about, I wanted to go up at least halfway um, on the mushrooms. So uh, I'm going to put in just like maybe an uh, inch and a half, two inches or so right now. We're going to grab our mushrooms here. These definitely have some moisture on them still. They've, you know, they've drained off a little bit. That's great. It's okay if there's some moisture on them. It's gonna help them cling to that flour mixture in the first dredge. We're gonna make our flour mixture. It's gonna have equal parts flour and breadcrumbs. And I like to put in like a little bit of like a soup base. This is uh, one of our vendors on Forage. They make a great vegetable and mushroom dehydrated stock. We're gonna get equal parts breadcrumbs and flour I'm also, I'm working with seasoned breadcrumbs here. So there's already some salt, there's already some herbs in there. If you just have plain breadcrumbs, that's fine. Um, just make sure that you're seasoning a little bit better with some more salt um, and throw some other uh, dried herbs in there if you want to. In my dry mix, I'm gonna put in a little bit of like powdered soup base. This is just super umami. Got some good seasoning in there. Feel free to put in black pepper, put in your favorite like Cajun spice, um, whatever kind of speaks to you. Just throw it right in there. Because these mushrooms are um, pickled ahead of time in that super vinegary brine, um, and they're getting fried out in oil, they have so much fat and acid that they can take a lot of salt. We're not going for um, like a cottage court salad fantasy right now. This is a game day mushroom snack. So I'm not afraid for it to be uh, a little salty. This is done for now. I'm gonna throw in some eggs here. I'm gonna go one more just in case. Woo! I'm just gonna stir these up. We want to whisk these until there's no streaks in them at all. And I'm going to add in like a tablespoon or two of water just to thin it out a little bit. If you're not an egg eater, go ahead and use that flaxseed egg. 
that'll work just as well to get everything stuck together. And if you want to keep it a little bit wild, you can even take plantain seeds and grind those, mix them with some water, and that will kind of have that same, that same texture. And you can use it just like you would like a flaxseed or a chia seed egg. Sweet. That's looking good to me. And again, we're not going to forget to season this. Go in with a little salt and a little bit of that same bouillon base. Sweet. Those are looking good to go. And we are ready to start dredging. If you've ever fried something off before, like chicken nuggets, this is gonna be very familiar. Um, we're gonna go dry, wet, dry. Um, I'm gonna keep one dry hand, one wet hand. So I'm gonna take the mushrooms like this. They already have some moisture on them, that's great. I'm gonna go in with the dry side, just coat these bad boys up. Really make sure that I'm getting it in between all the fronds. Gonna drop this into the egg, wet hand, get that coated. Drain off any excess, shake that all off. Back into the dry. Get those coated, oops. Again, making sure I'm in between all those fronds. Shake off the excess, and we're gonna put him here to wait to hang out. Once we get started here, it's gonna move pretty quickly. These guys are gonna go straight into the oil, go into the golden brown, and then uh, straight onto the rack, and then we're gonna hit it with some extra salt. Again, that's because um, all the fat, all the acid, they can take a lot of salt. To test if this oil is hot enough, I'm gonna grab a little bit of our flour mixture. I've got some like little pieces of mushroom still stuck in there. I'm just gonna drop it in and hope that it sizzles. It's bubbling pretty quickly, not too bad. I think this is a good place to start. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and grab things. So I'm just gonna go in with my hands. There's no need to be afraid of a fry oil. The only time you need to be afraid is if you're dropping it in from up top and it splashes back on you. So be gentle and get right in there. I'm only gonna put in a couple at a time because this oil temperature isn't super hot. Um, and every time we add a mushroom in, that temperature is gonna drop a little bit. So um, I'm just putting in two or three to start, and then we'll see how that goes. We're almost there. So when these come out, I'm gonna drain them on this rack, and then I'm gonna hit them with salt real quick. When you pull them out of the oil, they're gonna continue cooking for a little bit. So um, you don't wanna wait until they're like perfectly dark brown all the way over. We just wanna make sure they're a little bit light, pull them out just before they seem ready and hit them with a good amount of kosher salt. Yeah, that texture feels awesome. Here we go. Let this guy drain off, hit it with a little bit of salt. Nice. I'm gonna turn this off, clear this guy, and we're gonna be ready to plate. I guess I'm gonna start with the ranch. Oh yeah. And this is, oh God, so herbal and fresh smelling. And let's get these guys right on the plate. Big boys down first. Oh yeah, do you hear how crispy that is? Oh yes. Yes, okay. This is looking, whoo, this is looking good. I'm gonna break one of these open to show you what it's like on the inside. This crisp is just right. And if I break it open, you're still gonna get that great texture from the maitake mushroom. Oh, look at that. Look how beautiful that inside is and how nice that crust is. I'm gonna give it a taste first before I dip it into the ranch. If you like fried pickles, it's like that, but even better because you've got that little savory, earthy moment from the mushrooms. I'm gonna go into that ranch. It's probably not good for my body, but I uh, could eat um, pounds and pounds of this. Woo! So again, these are my pickle fried maitake mushrooms with a wild ranch. Uh, you can get the full recipe on forage.com. Make these for your next game day or for um, the next day that you've got friends over. Um, it will not disappoint, I promise. Mm. 